Hello and welcome to this month's webinar entitled Ions, Telomeres, and Beers, Oh My! The New Science of Aging. This is Gary Sams, the Chief Wellness Officer of Be Better Health, and I'm excited to be back with you this month. But before I get to the presentation that we're going to cover today, I want to take a moment to point out the new name and logo you see on this cover slide. I'm happy to report that Be Better was recently acquired by eBix Incorporated and will be a part of a new division formed by the combination of Benergy, Personal Best, Hope Health, and Fringe Facts. And I know this new combination of companies is going to bring a lot of new resources and solutions together to help improve employee health. So we're excited about this, uh, this new uh, change for us. So back to aging. Groucho Marx, uh, the actor and uh, comedian from you know, the bygone area, was once quoted as saying, age is not a particularly interesting subject. Anyone can get old. All you have to do is live long enough. Well, with all due respect to Groucho, most of us are interested in aging and particularly how to slow the aging process. And that's what we're going to cover uh, today. So you may be wondering uh, about the title I chose for this presentation. And uh, you know, as you can tell by the screenshot here from uh, The Wizard of Oz, I'm playing off of that passage in the movie that's uh, often quoted, lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. And Dorothy and her friends, you know, they repeat that phrase as they pass through the forest because of fear of the unknown and you know, many of us have a fear around aging for the same reason. You know, we just don't know what to expect. The good news is that uh, the science of aging is really progressing uh, a lot these days. And we know so much more today about aging than we have in the past. And, you know, we're doing pretty good as a species here. And so, as you can see by this uh, chart on the left, you know, life expectancy has dramatically uh, improved and increased uh, over the years. Now this is going back quite a ways to the 1600s, but at that time the life expectancy at birth was 30 years on average. And today, this chart's a little bit dated at 2012, the most recent data that I've seen, you know, it's around 81 years I think in the US now. And some cultures and countries have a little bit uh, higher and some obviously a little lower. But you know, we've gone from 30 years to let's say 80 years. And the primary reason for that is you know, this, um, you know, the, in the past, you know, we were really susceptible uh, to death and illness from infectious and parasitic type diseases. And now today what's mostly impacting um, our mortality are the chronic conditions, things like heart disease, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, cancer, you know, those types of things. So there are many reasons you know, that are responsible for this you know, shift and this you know, increase in uh, longevity. I wanted to point out a few here. You know, obviously sanitation and hygiene are much better today than they were in the past, the, uh, particularly in you know, the developed uh, countries of the world. We have a dramatically lower infant mortality rate, and that's a big, big factor in um, you know life expectancy that we see uh, as a species. You know the uh, prenatal care uh, that we have today, our ability when there is an issue uh, in childbirth because of you know modern medicine, um, you know is so much. Uh, better today than it was even you know, 50 years ago as far as being able to deal with premature birth, you know, those types of things. Uh, we have much safer workplaces today. I'm happy that for, I'm sure most of you that are listening in today and our clients, you know, they have safety programs, they have safety trainings, you know, organizations take safety very seriously today. Control of infectious disease, we're much better at identifying you know, uh, these diseases early and containing them. And then once we uh, understand it, our ability to treat them, things like vaccination, all of that, you know, makes a big impact. 
safer and healthier foods obviously are important and much improved over the past and within that group uh, water you know which we know is uh, really important uh, to our health and healthful aging uh, you know our water supply is much safer and better than it's ever been advances in health care you know that's an obvious one you know we're able to uh, treat things that in the past you know, would have killed us at an early age. So advances in health care are important. So the question that I want to get at now is how can we turn back the clock? You know, that's what most of us are interested in. You know, what can we do about the aging process? We know it's inevitable, but what can we do to slow it down? And I'm going to talk about three kind of areas of interest uh, that science has looked at and what we should think of that you know in in, in our uh, processes and practices and the first one uh, going along with the ions theme is uh, the free radical theory of aging I'm sure most of you have heard of this you know it uh, as I state here it was once the main theory of how and why we age and it's really based on the notion that as we live basically the processes of living metabolism breathing respiration you know these things um, produce oxidative damage in our in our body and that that accumulate that oxidative damage accumulates over time in the form of these free radicals and it uh, impacts our ability to um, produce energy or the ability of you know our our bodies to heal itself and so forth and so this accumulation of free radicals over time and the oxidative damage leads to aging the science is really starting to look a little differently at this and as you uh, point out here one critical blow to the notion of free radicals being really responsible for aging is that when they look at populations where they've introduced antioxidant supplementation which is supposed to make an impact on free radicals and those are things like you know taking vitamin C vitamin D vitamin E and again studying the folks that are uh, using that kind of supplementation uh, supplements you know to make an impact they don't see the corresponding um, impact on uh, age associated diseases and as I point out in some cases uh, they've even noted an increased res risk of death so you know for that reason I have to put a big question mark on uh, you know, whether you know, uh, antioxidants and the supplements that I've list here are really you know uh, what we need to do to turn back the clock so we'll put a, a question mark on that another area kind of near and dear to my heart because I you know I like particularly craft beers um, is uh, you know alcohol consumption and you know, what about you know looking at alcohol and aging so you know the I have a question mark on this one as well and the science that I've been able to review is that there are benefits to moderate alcohol consumption and particularly as I list here you know they uh, seem to reduce your risk of developing and dying from heart disease uh, they reduce the risk for ischemic stroke and can possibly reduce your risk of diabetes moderate alcohol consumption in the studies that I've looked at is normally measured as one to two alcoholic beverages uh, per day or on several days uh, of the week anything in excess of that there is a negative consequence to your health and being a teetotaler seems to have the same effect you know the uh, and there's been lots of studies particularly uh, recently on women and showing that this moderate alcohol consumption seems to have an impact you know uh, on heart disease and so the question of whether it impacts the aging process really isn't clear it impacts mortality and life expectancy because it makes an impact on heart disease and diabetes and those things you know, can lead to you know uh, premature death and so forth 
but you know, does it turn back the clock? Again, I have to put a question mark on that one. One area that does seem to be really making a difference and that's getting a lot of uh, public, uh, publicity and study these days is this uh, looking at this um, science of uh, looking at our DNA and particularly the telomeres. And telomeres, and I'm not going to get into too much uh, scientific detail here in the definition, but basically, you know, they set at the end of uh, the strands of uh, DNA on the chromosomes, and they are really important in the process of uh, protecting our ability, the ability of our cells, our genes, and so forth to reproduce so that you know, we uh, rejuvenate ourselves. And um, just kind of as a side note here, you know, uh, I've said it many times before, you know, our bodies are just really remarkable in the sense of uh, their abil ability to heal and uh, you know, to keep us healthy. You know, the, and this is particularly true when it comes to you know, uh, the rejuvenation process that's always going on in our body. You know, consider for the fact that you know, our stomach lining uh, is re rebuilt every five days you know, through this process that we're, we're basically talking about here. You know, the cells being able to uh, replicate and reproduce. Our bones, we basically have a whole new skeleton every three months through this process. The liver every six weeks. Even the brain, you know, a, every year is basically new in the sense that, you know, there's, you know, the cells have, cells have died and cells have replaced those, uh, those dead cells. The skin every month, you know, and that's kind of one that we can sort of see firsthand. You know, we see our skin, you know, flaking off or something like that. If it's dry, it's always being replaced. And these telomeres are central to that process. And, you know, the scientists suggest that we think of it as uh, almost like the end caps on our shoelaces. You know, the, that plastic cap allows us to you know, put the lace in and out you know, easily and efficiently. If the cap comes off, the shoelace gets frayed and then it's not very efficient or effective anymore. And so, you know, what we need to really look at is how we can impact the health and uh, the telomeres and particularly the length of the telomere because as we age they get shortened and um, the chart here over here on the left is a really graphic uh, depiction of that. You know, at infancy, you know, you can see the length there and it's dramatically less, you know, when we reach age 65. Uh, so science is really investigating okay, if it seems like you know, the, it's the telomeres getting shorter, which means that our cells don't replicate as efficiently and effectively as they did when we were younger, and that's what's leading to the aging process, what can we do to keep those telomeres longer? And so that's the good news. You know, we can make an impact on this through our own lifestyle actions. And this is a book that was recently published called uh, Living Younger, Healthier, Longer, The Telomere Effect. And one of the lead authors here, Elizabeth Blackburn, was actually awarded the Nobel Prize uh, for Science and Medicine here a few years back for her research on this. And the main message of this book is that, you know, where once we thought that, you know, we were born with a certain, uh, you know, our genetics, you know, uh, and you can't change your, you know, your DNA, you can't change your genes. And it was kind of the luck of the draw. If you had parents that you know, uh, were healthy and lived long, well, then you had a good chance too. But there, it was kind of predetermined. It wasn't something that you could affect yourself. And r the science is really showing that that's not true, you know, that we can make an impact on this aging process. And they think through, you know, preserving the length of telomeres is a principal way that that's being done. And so, uh, you know, again, as I point out here, based on you know, the review of thousands of studies, you know, it seems to be bearing this out. So the question becomes, you know, what can we do to kind of lengthen our telomeres and keep preserve that ability for us to re 
rejuvenate ourselves over time. And that's what I've listed here. And this list isn't going to come as a surprise to you. You know, it's something that I talk about uh, practically in every one of these presentations. You know, these habits and these lifestyle practices impact our well-being. So moderate exercise, you know, it's shown that it's not, uh, you know, uh, having to run a marathon or particularly strenuous exercise that makes the impact on telomere length. It's moderate exercise. So a thumbs up. The antioxidant supplements, you know, taking vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D, you know, we have to put a question mark on that. And as I mentioned, you know, that's something that I would encourage you as an individual to talk to a dietitian, looking at your own, you know, uh, dietary habits to see if you need supplementation. Good nutritional habits in general, though, are very important. You know, eating fruits and vegetables and so forth, fresh, healthy food, definitely shown to make an impact. Weight management, not being too heavy or too light, uh, has seemed to bear itself out. Drinking beer or alcohol, again, a question mark. Um, not so certain on that one. Not smoking, uh, important in the studies show that that makes an impact on telomere length. These last two, reducing stress and having a positive uh, mental attitude, uh, you know, mindfulness, been a lot of study on that, and that seems to definitely uh, make an impact on this. You know, we can sort of, um, through our, our minds and our thinking and our attitudes, uh, help turn back the clock and preserve the telomere length, you know, that keeps us young. So that's, all of these things are, you know, things that we should be doing anyhow, but when it comes to, you know, staying young and healthy, they seem to be particularly important. Finally, for another quote here, uh, Lucille Ball said, the secret of staying young is to live honestly, eat slowly, and lie about your age. And so <laughs> however you choose to uh, think about aging, I certainly wish everyone, you know, uh, you know, a long life and more importantly, more, you know, life in your years, you know, so that you're young at heart uh, at the very least. Um, as always, I appreciate your time this afternoon. Remember to take uh, the short quiz that accompanies this so that you get credit, you know, in your incentive program and stay tuned for more topics coming up. Thank you so much.